Welcome. It's good to be back with you. Thank you for Rick and Nelson and Karen and Sean for helping me as I went on a retreat. But I'm very happy to be back with you guys again. Today is the feast of St. Camillus to Lillis. I'll talk about him a little bit later because I think he applies to our first reading today. Make sure I want you to read the first reading today. It's kind of a really important one. So let's zoom in on that one. Uh, our topic here is Moses, and uh, um, anyway, superhero of Moses, actually. He's supposed to look like a superhero there. But let's begin. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Let's ask God for his wonderful, tender mercy. Awesome to be with you. Let's call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come to us today in word, Christ, have mercy. And you're gonna come again in glory to bring salvation to your people, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life, amen. Let us pray. O God, who adorned the priest St. Camillus with a singular grace of charity toward the sick, pour out upon us by his merits a spirit of love for you so that serving you and our neighbor, we may at the hour of death pass swiftly over to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. A certain man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman who conceived and bore a son. Seeing that he was a goodly child, she hid him from, for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she took a papyrus basket doubted with bitumen and pitch, and putting the child in it, placed it among the reeds on the river bank. His sister stationed herself at a distance to find out what would happen to him. Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to bathe while her maid walked along the river bank. Noticing the basket among the reeds, she sent her handmaid to fetch it. On opening it, she looked and lo, there was a baby boy crying. She was moved with pity for him and said, 
It is one of the Hebrew children. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call one of the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Yes, do, she answered. So the maiden went and called the child's own mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will repay you. The woman, therefore, took the child and nursed it. Then the child grew. She brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her son and called him Moses. For she said, I drew him out of the water. On one occasion, after Moses had grown up, when he visited his kinmen and witnessed their forced labor, he saw an Egyptian striking a Hebrew, one of his own kinsmen. Looking about and seeing no one, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. The next day, he went out again, and now two Hebrews were fighting. So he asked the culprit, Why are you striking your fellow Hebrews? By the culprit replied, Who has appointed you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses became afraid and thought, The affair must certainly be known. Pharaoh, too, heard of the affair and sought to put him to death. But Moses fled from him and stayed in the land of Midian. The word of the Lord. sunk in the abysmal swamp where there is no foothold. I have reached the watery depths. The flood overwhelms me. But I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. help, O God, protect me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. Revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to reproach the towns where most of his mighty deeds had been done. Since they had not repented, 
Woe to you, Chorazim. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would long ago have repented in sackcloth and ashes. But I say to you, it would be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And as for you, Capernaum, this is where Jesus' headquarters really were. Will you be exalted in heaven? You'll go down to the netherworld. For if the mighty deeds done in your midst have been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you, it would be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, something to make us think. The mighty deeds done at our mother's sorrows in St. Michael's, or the mighty deeds done in Johnstown. But anyway, let's move over to the first reading today. And one commentator writes, as a word among us, he says, every secret hero has an origin story. Peter Parker, Spider-Man, is bitten by a radioactive spider, becomes Spider-Man. Steve Rogers, injected with some secret serum, and he becomes Captain America. And we seem to love our superheroes. I mean, all these movies that come out about all these different superheroes are all blockbusters, and uh, and they have these, these extraordinary signs that somewhere along they're going to be great. But in the Bible, it's a different story. Here is Moses, our superhero for today, a killer, a fugitive from justice. Not a great start for him. Shouldn't we kind of be sweeping this kind of stuff under the rug? You know what I mean? And, and we do. I was reading a story this morning from another group in the church that is that was, now they're not, they're coming out in the open. They were sweeping something, uh, uh, some more abuse uh, uh, under the carpet. We have other organizations all do it, no excuse, but we seem to have a tendency to do that. But the Bible doesn't do that at all. Isn't it incredible how the Bible doesn't do any such thing? Have you noticed? Um, all of our heroes, except for Jesus and Mary, but look at the humble birth of those two, and possibly Joseph, but look how humble the whole thing really, really is. All of them have a past, seemingly. Uh, Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David did some pretty bad stuff. Solomon lost his way. Uh, somewhere on the way with his harem along the way, Elijah, Jeremiah, and on and on and on it goes. The Bible is honest about his superheroes, about their strengths, and also very much about their weaknesses. Let's look at the New Testament. Paul, the murderer. Peter, the betrayer. All the time, a combination of weaknesses and strengths all through the Bible isn't unusual. Nobody seems to be kind of queak, squeaky clean here in all of this. And so that brings me to all of you. And you might be saying, <laughs> not that bad, not as bad as those guys are. Well, maybe that's true uh, for some of us. But this makes the point that God calls ordinary people. He calls everyday people to do great. He calls everyday people to be superheroes. Uh, super, superheroes in God's grace, called to do great things. Every single one of us in our lives called to do great things. And if we, we read more about Moses and more about his adventures he's going to be doing, and we're going to see how sometimes he falls short, sometimes he's ready to pull out his hair, sometimes he's ready to strangle somebody. But all the while, he stays the course. All the while, staying the course. And, and let me share with you our saint today. I wanted to mention this. I'm going to read this to you a little bit. I'm going to make some comments as we go through it. Camillus de Lillis. Now, it goes on to say, after a troubled youth, I think it was a gambler. I think he got in trouble with big debt. I think he had an addiction to gambling. I, I maybe he had other addictions too, but I, I'm pretty sure it was a big addiction to gambling. He was converted to a life of penance uh, in the midst of this after he finally kind of hit bottom with all that through the ministry of these Capuchins that he met. Unable to enter the Franciscans because of chronic ulcers on his legs, they wouldn't take him, he sought employment in a hospital in Rome. Now, I'll tell you, folks, this is, this is in the 1500s, hospitals in those days, horrible, horrible places. He found the nurses at the hospital lazy and inattentive. They're probably burnt out, you know, just, just trying to take care of these horrible, horrible situations. They're probably completely burnt out from all of it. So in August of 1582, 
You're the call to found an order dedicated to the care of the sick. As a matter of fact, I really think the idea is his habit that they had was a big red cross on the front. And I think the red cross of today got their red cross from Camillus Delilus's order, which I don't even know the name of them. And each patient Camillus saw another Christ. According to Matthew 25, 40, Amen, I say to you, whatever you do, the least of my brothers, you did to me. And Camillus died in 1614. He's the patron of sick hospitals and nurses. Most especially nurses who desperately need a patron saint these days. Things are tough for them. But anyway, here's our troubled guy. Kind of messed up. Has addictions. I think gambling, one of the big ones. It beat up physically for whatever reason he was. But he became a great superhero saint. Like all the ones we're talking about. You know, I could tell you story after story of saint who was just a mess in their youth, a mess in their early years. All of a sudden, they become great. They become superheroes. Here's my questions for today. Can you see how God has called ordinary people to do great things like you? And what great things have you been called to do? So thank you folks for watching. And I'm glad to be back with you again today. See you again tomorrow. Goodbye now.